Listen, Talk, Repeat podcast. I'm Wendy Capewell, your Relationship Specialist, and this podcast is all about things relating and affecting relationships. I'll be interviewing guests who are experts in their profession, learning more about what they do and how they help others. In some episodes, I'll be sharing some insights and tips of my own. So settle back and enjoy. Hi, I want to talk about why our past impacts on us in the here and now. Why does it? I get so many clients um, talking to me and saying, yeah, but that was that was ages ago. That was in my childhood. Why is it affecting me now? I should be over it. They get annoyed that they can't understand why it's still impacting on them. And worse, other people in their life also say, tell them that, that they should be over it. But it doesn't, you know, when you think about if you have your whole body, we don't, we, we collect things along the way. <laughs> so for example, women complain as they get a little bit older, they've got crow's feet. Or like me, I've got wrinkles here. But the reason I've got those is because of my life. I smile, so my eyes crinkle up. I smile, my cheeks smile up, and therefore, you know, I get wrinkles in my face because I smile. Okay, it's annoying, wouldn't we just like that perfect baby-like face that never got a wrinkle, but it's not real. This is because of my life and I love the fact that I do have those, those little laughter lines and those wrinkles because that is part of me. So if we've got that and we've also got those physical scars as well in our bodies from, I don't know, injuries that we had when we were a child or an accident or surgery, our bodies won't they repair but you will still have the scars for example I've got a, I've got certain scars because um, I had surgery yes the surgeons knitted my body back together they, they corrected the scars but as much as my body tried to do its best in repairing me there are parts that are still a little bit numb I've learned how to live with that and my brain disregards it most of the time. But if I touch that area when I'm not thinking about it, unawares, it will I'll suddenly trigger me and go, oh, that was numb. That's a numb part. It's, oh, that reminds me then of the surgery I had. So if that's the case, Think about it that way, that will happen to the emotional scars that you pick up. You cannot just disregard it and you can't detach your emotions from your physical body either. They're together, they're connected, we are just one whole being. And so when you've picked up those emotional scars, whether it be from childhood, previous relationships, things that happened at school, whatever they were, you're going to have those scars. Now, it doesn't mean that you are going to be kind of, um, if they're not irreparable, irrepa and generally they don't affect our lives too much. But there are times when we get those triggers, like when I touch that numb part of my body where I had a scar and go, Oh, that's different. It feels different. It's a trigger. And so the kinds of things that will happen are that something will trigger that person. Now, the, the most things that I come across with clients is when people have been abused as children. And sexual abuse is one of the greatest things. It's not just sexual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse affects a child's upbringing and it will 
affect that child and the way they perform during their lives, perform or behave. It can't be eradicated instantly. We learn to cope in the world despite what happened to us. And we find coping mechanisms. Now, for some people, it might be that they're ever the joker because they hide behind that facade and that's how they function in the world. That's how they, they get over their, they protect themselves. For other people, it might be that they're quite standoffish and they can't really fully enter into a relationship, whatever it might be, a friendship even. There might be others who really can't cope with authority because authority let them down when they were a child. So why would they respect authority? In fact, they kick against it because if it was a parent or a teacher or the scout leader who abused them as a child, that would say to them, I can't trust authority. People can't trust easily because they've been let down as children or young adults or in previous relationships. We need to protect ourselves. And that's why it affects us. And the more we travel on in our lives, the more we pick up. And for some people, they just don't understand it. They say, well, yeah, but that was in my past and I dealt with it. I dealt with it. But how did you deal with it? Was it that whenever someone came near you, you, you punched seven bells out of them because nobody was going to get the better of you? Was it that you just hid and um, became very withdrawn? Was it that you became emotionally unwell? Was it that you suffered with depression, anxiety? Was it that you found solace in alcohol? Or was it that you found solace in, in drugs, illicit drugs, or eating? or shopping. It can be a million different things that people will find as, as a support. I'm not saying that they're healthy support, but they support that person. It means they don't have to face what's going on for them and it's their coping mechanism. But it does affect us. And I was thinking, one of the analogies I wanted to use today was you think about these clever marketeers and these amazing kind of technology that goes on in um, on, the, on the internet. People would say, well, how on earth is it that I was looking at a particular thing? I don't know. For me, it might be theatre tickets on a, on a website. And then I'll go onto Facebook or I'll go onto another website and it's followed me. Up comes that same advert. Or even I might be on Instagram and then that same thing will come up. It's clever, isn't it? But they have learnt those algorithms. You remember that word that we all shy away from? Algorithms. Those damned algorithms. What are they? But we've got them in our brain, haven't we? When you think about it, our brain has algorithms because certain things will trigger us. It, it's like a major, it's the most amazing computer in the whole world. Nobody could ever, ever replicate our brains. So something will trigger it. And it might actually trigger it in the wrong way. Just like when you've been searching for a pair of shoes and then all of a sudden you get inundated with um, adverts that pop up for, I don't know, incontinence knickers or something. <laughs> Why does it do that? It ma it's a malfunction somewhere. But that's what happens in our brain. It kind of malfunctions and it comes up and goes, you know, that, ah, that really hurt. I'm, that person is affecting me. That relationship, that, that guy who I'm in love with, I'm in a relationship with, they've said something that I take real exception to. Or they're behaving in a particular way. But all it is, is that trigger back. It's that the wrong marketeering, the wrong algorithm, if you like. That algorithm has just malfunctioned because it's saying, I can't trust this person in my life. But actually what it is, you can't trust that person who let you down when you were a child or a young person or in that previous relationship. 
And that's why we can't get over it instantly. We can't, we can't suddenly change our lives around and say, well, that was in the past, now we need to get over it. Because it's that subliminal message that's gone on. It's that scar, it's that emotional scar. You can't get rid of those, I can't get rid of my laughter lines. <laughs> they won't go. They're there because that's part of my life. But I can learn to live my life despite them and say, do you know what? That happened in my life, I can't change it, but I'm going to live with it rather than have Botox and plastic surgery. And because that's part of my history. That's what makes me the person I am. But there are parts of my life I'd prefer not to we might be reminded of and they're probably the emotional parts that I carry around with me but it is about those learning to cope and remembering that we can make those changes but it does take the effort and we can't keep blaming that on our whole lives forever we, that's the other danger that some people hang their hat on it and say, yeah, well, it was because. Okay, it was because that those things happened, but it doesn't have to define you. Don't blame other people for having those scars, but equally believe in yourself, acknowledge when you react in a particular way, why you're reacting like that and just question yourself as to whether that reaction is actually a useful one. Is it in the here and now, or is it because of something that happened in your past? Because that could well be it. And then you, once it's in your awareness, that's when you can start your journey of saying, okay, this isn't because I, I, this guy I'm, I'm in a relationship with, for example, it's not him that's the problem. What it is, is that's because I didn't trust in a previous relationship or somebody let me down in the past. Let me think about this and see. It's my stuff. It's not his. I really hope you enjoyed the podcast today. And you can always listen to others by uh, clicking on my website, www.yourrelationshipspecialist.co.uk and finding the podcast on there. You can also learn much more about me and get in touch or sign up for my newsletter. So until next time, bye for now.